Please be seated. The Archbishop, Bishop Margaret Adahosa, we all call her Mama, right? We call her Mama, and it's not because she looks like a Mama, but because she is. <laughs> Bishop and Reverend Feb and Lori Adahosa, Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Governing Council, Bishops of the Ministry, Students of the Benzin Idahosa University, <laughs> Distinguished Guests, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for the honor that you've done me. Several recognitions, so many good things you've said. I thank you for the opportunity to be a part of what you're doing. But I am very grateful. Um, I didn't think That's what I was doing. When I gave in to the university, I was taking the opportunity afforded me to say thank you. I'm one grateful person, just one among so many. I'm just a grateful person. Grateful for many things. Firstly, for what and who the Archbishop Benson Dahosa was to me. I heard Bishop Feb, we call him Feb, but I hope now you, you just heard the, the meaning of Feb. But um, when he was talking about the legacy, well, my thought was, when I was coming here, I thought about the legacy of the Archbishop. And I've always had in my mind, I'm his legacy. You are his legacy. This is our campus. Do you get it? It's of the legacy of the Archbishop Benson Idahosa. We are his fruit. You get it? I count myself highly honored. To have been given the opportunity to be here celebrating. Now, today is 10th of March. It'll be in two days from now, 12th of March, the anniversary of the, what did you say? 22 years, yes, since he 
transited from here. You say, what did he go for? I'll tell you. On that day, when it happened, Reverend Tom was in Benin and called me on the phone. He said, Pastor, there's something on the, on the screen. I don't know what they're talking about. I said, what is it? He said, they're announcing that the Archbishop has passed on. He said, I don't understand what they're saying. But I understood. I understood because he had told me, invite me. He said to me, before the 14th of March, this was December. He was speaking with me in December. And he called his secretary and said, Where's your card? She came out with a card. He wrote something on it. He said again to me, Remember, before the 14th of March. I said, Yes, sir. Then I thought, does he know why he sent for me? Because he sent for me. I can give you all that story. But I was thinking, does he know why he sent for me? He said, follow me. So I followed him. He took me around. And he kept saying, just for inspiration. Just for inspiration. And I followed him. And we went around and came back. I sat down. And he talked about what he was doing about the university. He had a picture. A large picture in his hand. And when he was done talking about the university and a few other things, he said, let me pray for you. Kneel down. So I went on my knees and I knew that was the reason he sent for me. Because years before, the Lord had told me what he was going to do. That on a particular occasion, he would call for me and he would do this. I didn't know when, but while I was there, he said, kneel down, let me pray for you. And he laid hands on me and spoke words of the spirit. Now, it may interest you to know, two years before then, I was at a state in my life, a young preacher, just going into the ministry, thinking what I was going to do further, because I just didn't really have in the ministers who would take personal interest. It's one of the things that young ministers face when you don't have anybody who takes interest in you to want to mentor you. But I had to learn from the Archbishop now, I'll come to that in a second. But I was at this point in my life, I was thinking, what do I do? So, I began to write down the names of the ministers. I thought I might need to contact. So I had three names. The first one was the Archbishop Benzinita Jose. And I wrote the other two. While I was thinking, how can I contact them? 
a voice spoke about three feet above my head and said, don't contact them. I'll contact them for you. I'll get them to contact you. It was a short while after that, I got a message. The Archbishop wanted to see me. This was contact number one. And I wanted to be very sure he wanted to see me. I sent Reverend Tom. I said, go and see the Archbishop. I got a message he wants to see me. Is it true? And Reverend Tom went. And the Archbishop said, certainly. So that's how I went to see him. Prior to that time, when I was a young teenager, I worked at the office known as the National Office Church of God Mission. And I used to see Feb, Frida, and the other ones, the other two girls, when with the white Toyota crown, they'll go pick them from school. Yeah, I was there. Just a young boy. And like Mama just said, every day, every day in that office, I would be at the lounge looking at the pictures. Large circles, wonders and signs. I would stare and stare and stare. Because I could see in my Bible the miracles. But you see, I only used imagination. Now the Archbishop had the pictures. I could see the pictures. His crusades, the videos from his crusades were amazing. Amazing. But beyond all of that is what the Archbishop meant to me because I, I'm a good learner. That's important. I know how to learn. And I want to tell you, I, I, I wrote down a few thoughts here just so I can help you understand where I'm coming from. You know, my, my dad has passed on to heaven now. An amazing gentleman. He preached the gospel too. My mother is amazing. And uh, they brought us up very well. 